Is Genshin Impact worth playing? There are a lot of videos discouraging people from starting Genshin Impact, complaining about the mechanics or characters. I'd like to address them to help you get more context so that you can decide for yourself. One of the major issues I hear about is new characters and level gating. Each character in the game is primarily leveled up by using EXP books that you obtain through many methods. You'll eventually reach a point where you need to do an ascension. You're probably familiar with ascension methods from other mobile games, but in Genshin Impact, it's a little bit different. In Genshin Impact, you don't need to obtain shards through an extremely rare gacha pull. All ascension materials can be found throughout the world as pickups. Or you can obtain them by killing world bosses or domain dungeon bosses. Once you get a little further into the ascension process, it'll become necessary to do them every 10 levels. You'll need to obtain the crystals from the world bosses that we were just talking about. With the introduction of the island nation Inazuma, you are gated from some of those materials for heroes whose homeland is Inazuma. So are you just completely out of luck? Well, the answer is simply no. And it's a simple no because of the game's environmental control called Adventure Rank. Adventure Rank connects to something else called World Level, and this actually caps the enemy's levels. So if you don't level up your Adventure Rank and you don't level up your World Level, you don't have to worry about the levels of the enemies. In fact, you can go through the entire game without leveling it up at all. All the enemies in the world, all the world bosses, as well as the story content will all be adjusted to your Adventure Rank and World Level. So just don't start pushing your adventure rank until after you reach Inazuma, and then you'll be able to access every point in the game to level up the newest characters without any trouble. Inazuma is the only place in the game which is gated by story. Some people have said the same thing about Sumeru, but you can still get there, it's just a long hike. Once you're there, you can unlock the waypoints, and then you can teleport whenever you have the resin to spend. And if by chance you accidentally level up your adventure rank, you can easily rank it down again. The next thing I'd like to talk about is character balance between 4-star characters and 5-star characters. Some people have said stick with your 5-star characters, or 5-star characters are OP and the game's impossible without them, or 4-star characters are useless. I've been hearing claims like this since I started the game at launch. I was really lucky enough to get a 5-star when I first started playing, but I didn't actually use him. Now, first of all, I didn't know how to check the level, so I didn't know if I was using a 4-star or a 5-star. But later in my Genshin Impact journey, I decided to forego all of my 5 stars and just stick with 4 star characters. I wanted to get the most out of the characters, and I thought it was kind of impossible to max out my 5 star characters. I got plenty of 4 star characters to the gacha and I thought I could cap them, and I could max out their constellations easily. So I didn't use any 5 stars at all for most of the game. Constellations are how you use duplicate copies of characters that you've already got. Constellations allow you to add some extra stats, or added effects to skills. They're not game-breaking in most cases, but they're pretty useful. And in some cases, they're even detrimental to your build. I have a lot of 5 stars now, and I use them a lot. Most of them have no additional constellations. And as I mentioned before, I didn't use anything but 4 stars for the vast majority of the story, so clearing the story content with only 4 star characters without max constellations is no problem at all. Another common criticism is gating the best weapons. The only good weapons are the 5 stars from the banners, they might say. While that's not a direct quote from anybody, I often hear claims like this. This is completely untrue. In fact, as I've stated before, I've played since launch. I did manage to get two 5 star weapons off of the banner summons. Unfortunately, both of them are bows and I don't like using bow characters since I play on mobile. But there is always a 4 star option available for every character in every situation. Some are pulled by Gacha and some are bought off of Paimon's bargain shop, not with cash, but with in-game currency. Some are crafted, and some of them are given by events or found on the world. If you choose to use the Battle Pass system, upon reaching level 30, you'll have the ability to select the weapon that you want. And these weapons are no throwaway weapons either, they're pretty useful. So playing in multiplayer mode I haven't had any trouble keeping up with other players, using only 4 star weapons and 4 star heroes. And just a side note that this game's multiplayer mode is co-op, not player versus player, so it won't be a pay to win in that sense. If you absolutely must reach the pinnacle of each player's potential, then it'll end up costing you a lot, yeah. 
Obtaining the original character plus six additional copies is probably going to be pretty expensive. But as I've stated before, you don't really need it, it's not necessary. And this segues nicely into the next topic, the gotcha system. I've heard people say that the gotcha system is the only reason that they won't touch the game, and that's a real shame. I've been destroyed by gotchas by other games in the past. I've dumped tons of money, hundreds of dollars in some cases, and I didn't even reach half the potential of the character. But this isn't Genshin, that's not how it works. Genshin has a pity system, like a lot of the other gacha games. Just by playing the game normally, you'll end up with enough currency to be able to do a 10 times summon pull, uh, 4 or 5 times, totaling to about 50 summons. Genshin's pity system allows a 5 star character to come after about 70 summons or so. When that 5 star comes, you get a 50-50 chance of either the banner character or a non-banner character. Most people have pretty good luck with these and they end up getting the character that they want. You'll see a lot of 5 stars running around at this constellation zero. I've rolled on characters and I missed them and it was disappointing. I dumped all my currency into Yae Miko twice and I lost the 50-50 twice. Uh, this also happened with Ayaka as well as her brother Ayato. And while it was disappointing, it didn't really ruin the game for me. I still had a lot of other characters I was still working on and building, so it didn't really matter. And last but not least, one of the most important elements of any game is the story. There are a lot of complaints out there that I've heard, like the game has poor plot progression or that Paimon's really annoying. And while some of these complaints may be based in truth, they're just opinions. Some of the points the story will progress and you have to piece things together on your own. But by the end of that little story arc, Paimon will usually explain all the little details. The game's for a wide audience, so of course they do that for the people who don't want to piece it together themselves. But the story is far more complex than a lot of these commenters believe, as well as there's a lot of things that are left unanswered for a long time. But where some of these commenters are right, are limited events that disappear over time. Like the Unreconciled Stars event, there is very important story that's just gone now. There are also bits and pieces of the story that are just skipped over because they have expected you to have read the manga, which I think many of the players don't even know exists. I think Hoyoverse is trying to address a lot of these issues with the release of Sumeru. The story cinematics are really long in Sumeru, but actually I don't mind, I kinda like it. They give a lot more detail, information, and lore, so I feel much more involved in the story. So with all this in mind, it's ultimately up to you to decide if Kenshin Impact is worth playing or not. But if you ask me, I'd say it definitely is, mostly because you have nothing to lose. It costs nothing to start, and spending money is optional. The game isn't really pay to win, and not spending money only slows you down a little bit. The music and graphics are beautiful, the voice acting in English and Japanese are great, and the other languages I've seen are pretty good. The characters are almost all likable. You can play co-op or alone, whichever you prefer, and the learning curve isn't that high. My name is Kiwamaru, thank you for watching. Until next time, friends.